Amen. Well, you know, I've got, I had five points. Somebody say five. five and uh, each of them starts with, by grace a father should be. And the first point was, the father should be a protector. The second point was, a father should be a provider. (laughs) The third one was, by grace, a father should be a promoter. Fourth one was, by grace, father should be a priest. And then number five, A father should be a prophet. Prophet, priest, and king. Amen. So, there are single parents that are fathering. Could be a man, could be a woman. There's people here who are fathering children of all ages, And they're not even their biological father. You get people who have adopted children, people who foster children, and you have uh, uh, grandfathers who are fathering children because the father is not there anymore. So they're all types of fathers. Amen. And how many of you know that fathers need help today? They need prayer today. They need prayer today. So whether a a mom or a single parent or a couple, fathering is a big commitment. And Proverbs 22 and verse 6, it says that we must bring up a child in the way that they should go. So when they're old, They'll never forget about it. They'll never depart from it. Now the way that they should go is the word of God. You know, I had an uncle. He was Irish and he had the best tomatoes in Scotland growing in his greenhouse. They were the size of your head. If he was here, Irish, that's what he would say. But they were just normal tomatoes. But... uh, when you, when you plant tomatoes, there's a stick, and then you, the, the, you train up the tomato plant on that stick. Or well, the word is like that stick. The word is like how you train up somebody. And God's word is the standard. God's word is the standard. God's word is the stick. God's word is the way. It says that they shall not depart from it. It is the word. When you're a priest in your house, you need to have, if the children are still with you, a family altar to train them up in the way that they should go. And we would have a family altar and we used to have supper all at the same table at the same time. And there was no TV on. You've got to be the priest in the house. You've got to be praying for children. Every day, you plead the blood of Jesus over them. Every day. Even when they grow large and they go away, you pray for your children. And if they wander away from the truth, this is what you do. You plead the blood of Jesus over them. And you draw a circle of love, God's love and your love around them, every day. Why do you say that? Because 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8 says, love never fails. Amen. That's what you do as a priest. When you're a priest in the house, you've got to put on the armor of God and fight for your kids. Go to war for your kids. Not only in the prayer closet, You maybe have to go to war at the school or the university or the workplace. Amen. You've got to see that they have a good job when it's time to have a good job and a good education when it's time to have a good education. Amen. When you're a priest in the house, 
You've got to go to 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. You've got to ask God for a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. And you need to, you need to find out which company they're keeping when they're small. Remember, you've got to talk to your children about Jesus when they're small, when they're very, very small. And then when they're tall and they've left the house, you've got to talk to Jesus about them. And I remember a story that were, he was our pastor, him and his wife were our pastor at one time, many, 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 many years ago. And she tells the story that, uh, about the, being a priest in the house. And her, her mom was a Christian, and she, they, she came, she, you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest guy in the whole universe. And, the, and the, her mom came up to my ear, and she came up to my ear as well. And she went into rebellion when she was a teenager. And she used to put the, the uh, jawline clothes out the window and go out the house with her uniform, school uniform on. You know what I mean, Melissa? And oh, <laughs> did I say that out loud? And... Uh, and then she would jump into the jolly clothes and gone, you see. And her mother caught her. Now, this is the pastor's wife eventually. Her mother caught her right at the back door. Caught her by the collar. She said, Satan, you can't have my daughter. Go in Jesus' name. She was so mortified, she never did it again. <laughs> Come on, give somebody a hand clap. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You've got to be a priest. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, you've got to be a protector. You know what? That John chapter 10, verse 28, and I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Amen. You've got to have your children in your hand. Amen. And you don't, you're a protector. You don't let anybody snatch children out of your hand and God's hand. Amen. Hallelujah. You know in the book of Ephesians, it's got three chapters in the one half and three chapters in the other half. And the one half, the first three chapters are the spiritual part and the other three chapters are the practical part talks about the family and talks about how to deal with the devil when it comes to attack the family. Put on the full armor of God, Dad. Amen. And if you're married, you, your, your wife, your spouse, should uh, put on the whole armor of God and they should join their faith shields together for their children. Amen. And fight and war. You can't have my son. You can't have my daughter. Praise the Lord Jesus. In Proverbs 29 and verse 15, it says, The rod and rebuke give wisdom. The rod, that's not you, Rod. The rod and rebuke give wisdom. But a child left to himself or herself brings shame to his mother. Now, that's not a great thing to talk about in the world today, to a, in the schools and all the rest of it. But you know what? There's a difference between discipline and punishment. Amen. Because we discipline according to the word of God, and we use the rod, and we use love, and we use forgiveness, and we tell them how, why. And we never do it in the bedroom, because that's the place of comfort. You always take them someplace that's different from that. But punishment, that's vengeance. No, no. Discipline is different from punishment. Hallelujah. It's in the Bible, so I didn't make it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, Three John two, beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. If I'm praying that over my family, 
I'll pray. Margaret, John, and Katie, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in good health just as your soul prospers. And I pray favor, favor, favor. You want to pray over your family. Amen. A father should be a promoter. Dad gets into the father's presence and prophesies and commands and encourages and goes to war on behalf of their children. Promoter, not a demoter. Jesus is always promoting you. And we got to be like Jesus. No, my son's growing big. He passed his exams. He got 60%. The next time he's going to get 70. Amen. Hallelujah. See, Father God, I talked a little bit about Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 is all about the Father. Ephesians chapter 2, all about the Son. Ephesians chapter 3, all about the Holy Ghost. When you go to Ephesians chapter 1 and you go to verse 6, it talks about the Father. It says, you are accepted, not tolerated. It doesn't say that. I just added that. God accepts you, not tolerates you. You have to accept your child, not tolerate. Oh, you know. (sighs) Makes me go in and tear up the toilet paper. No. You've accepted. How many people know that sometimes they don't feel accepted in a family? Little children. And it doesn't matter how many children you've got, you never have a favorite. By what name are you calling your child? By what name are you calling your child? Amen. I went to that pastor's office. Uh, many years ago with Jenny and his daughter was the sec- his secretary and he had a pet name for his daughter he called his daughter Queen Queen see he, w- he was saying something he was saying something you know why don't you speak your children's destiny instead of their destruction. Ah, oh, you'll never live. Yeah, you'll never make. Ah, oh, you did that. I'm willing. What are you going to do? Why? Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You can do all things through Christ. What name are you calling your child? Now there's a story in Genesis. We'll just get to it just now. I'll tell you the the, the chapter just now. And Rachel was having a baby. And she was dying. She died in the childbirth. She was in great pain. And the nurse said, you'll have the baby. She had the baby, but she died. Before she died, she named the baby. Ben-Onai. Today we will say Benoni. (laughs) Because it's the same word. It's the same word. (laughs) It's the same, Ben-Onai. Spelt exactly the same, and it means exactly the same. Ben is son, and Onai is sorrows. She named the baby son of sorrows, son of my pain. And the nurse ran to Jacob, 
Well, what's going on? What's going on? Now you've got a son. And the name, remember, what are you naming your child? Son of sorrow. Oh, you know what? You've been a pain to me all my life. You know what? You'll be the death of me. Have you ever heard people say, nobody here, but... <laughs> you're putting a name out there. It's not right. It's not right. Champion. Champion. So the baby came to Jacob. Says the, they've named the baby Ben Onai. Says no. The baby's name is not that. It's Benjamin. And Benjamin means son of my strength, son of my right hand, son of my power. He's my right hand man. A baby, he's my right hand. And he grew up, and many kings came forth from Benjamin. Give God and Jesus Christ. A father speaks and adds value over his child, not devalue. A father needs to lay hands on a newborn and pronounce blessing and speak a blessing over their child through their life. She's a queen. He's a king. He's a champion. He's an overcomer. Goodness and mercy follow my child. You don't teach your child to fear. You teach your child to fear not. I want all these people who are fathers or who are fathering, male or female, to stand. And we're going to pronounce, you're going to pronounce a blessing over your child. Are you ready? I declare my child blessed with God's supernatural wisdom. And my child has clear direction for, my, for their life. I declare my child blessed with creativity, courage, Ability, abundance. My child is blessed with a strong will, self-control, and self-discipline. My child is blessed with a great family, good friends, good health, faith, favor, fulfillment. My child is blessed with success, Supernatural strength, promotion, divine protection. My child is blessed with an obedient heart and a positive outlook on life. I declare that any curse ever spoken over my child, any negative word, that, ever, that has ever come against my child is broken right now in Jesus' name. And I declare that my child is blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed when they go in and blessed when they go out. And I declare that everything my child puts their hand to, will prosper and succeed. And I declare them blessed in the name of Jesus. Now give them glory in the house. Whoa!